Lee, the title of your new book is The Case for the Real Jesus. And, you know, there's about as many opinions about Jesus as there are people. That's true. Yeah, how do you really know who the real Jesus is? No, you're absolutely right, Mark. There are a million different opinions about who Jesus is. In fact, Newsweek magazine uh, asked people to go on a blog not long ago and ask them, who do you think Jesus is? And I just want to read you a couple of responses because they're very enlightening. Oh, this ought to be good. Yeah. One of them said, Jesus was every man. His name could well have been Morris. Too bad he was in male form this time around. Better luck next time. Uh, another one said, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe I am the Son of God. Another person said, Jesus was an enlightened being. Uh, another said, it's not even obvious that Jesus was an historical figure. If he was, the legends about him were common stories in the ancient Near East. The myths about Jesus aren't even original. Somebody else said, Jesus is about as real as Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, or King Arthur. And then somebody else said a similar thing, but it kind of put an edge to it. They said, Jesus is a fairy tale for grown-ups. Unfortunately, he's a fairy tale that leads people to bomb clinics, despise women, denigrate reason, and embrace greed. Uh, so you have a lot of different opinions. And to me, Mark, the issue is not so much, what's our opinion of Jesus? It's really, why do we hold that opinion? What evidence do we have to back up what we believe about. We can believe anything, it's irrelevant, it doesn't change reality. For instance, if I didn't believe in gravity, if I denied the existence of gravity, and yet I walked off a building, I'm gonna meet head on the reality of gravity. My yeah, opinion- Your beliefs don't affect it. Exactly, my beliefs don't affect reality. So, um, the question is not what's our opinion about Jesus, it's what can we discover about who he really is? Can we really come to a conclusion about who he really is. And I think the big problem that we face are our own biases and prejudices and presuppositions. Uh, for instance, some of our biases we may not even, even be aware of. Uh, Paul Vitz of New York University, a psychologist, did a study of atheists through history. And he found something very interesting. Every one of them, from Camus to Sartre to uh, Bertrand Russell, uh, Nietzsche, uh, even Madeline Murray O'Hare, you go right down the line and what you find, they all have something in common. They all had a father who either, either abandoned their family when they were young, died when they were young, which a child interprets as abandonment, or they had a terrible relationship with their dad. And this creates a cynicism about a heavenly father. If your earthly father had so disappointed you, then why would you search after a heavenly father and want to know him? So that can be a bias we don't even know we have, this emotional sticking point in our spiritual journey. Pride is another one. Um, Oz Guinness said that the prideful person demands doubt. He needs to have doubt because his own self-importance requires it, demands it. Interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting perspective. I had my own biases in when I was an atheist investigating Christianity. And that was, I was living a, an admittedly immoral lifestyle. I did not want there to be a God to hold me accountable for how I've lived. So I had a bias that I had to correct. So the, You're afraid you'll discover something that forces you to change, in other words. Exactly, and I didn't want to change. I, I didn't want to be held accountable. And so uh, really the question is, how do we avoid feeding our biases? And instead, how do we kind of correct for our biases, try to set those aside as best we can? We can't do it perfectly. None of us is objective. But can we set them aside sufficiently so that we can truly investigate the real Jesus? And Mark, I really do believe if we follow where the evidence goes, we're going to find out the truth about Jesus. Now, one last thing about this. One of the big barriers are the presuppositions that we can have. If we start out our journey saying, I don't believe in the supernatural, sort of like the Jesus Seminar, this, this far uh, left-wing a cabal of, of professors who uh, pontificate about the contents of the New Testament. They start out with the position that there is no supernatural. Well, wait a minute. It's like, you know, there is no God. Now give me your evidence for God. I yeah, mean, my mind's already made up. Per exactly said right. I mean, your mind's made up, therefore, um, you're not really truly giving the evidence its due. And what I would encourage people to do is to say, let me open up the possibility. I, I'm not omniscient. I don't know that there can't be a supernatural component. Um, dead people don't generally rise from the dead, but if you give, give me good evidence that Jesus did, I'm willing to consider that evidence. If we do that, if we follow the historical data, as I talk about in my book, The Case for the Real Jesus, I really do believe we can discover the real Jesus, and we can find that he is the Son of God who proved it by returning from the dead.